Once again, welcome to my channel. My name is Mr. Fee. You can call me Creativity Godfather. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and then hit the share button for others to see the kind of good work that I'm doing here. Uh, before we start, today we are here to draft the rabbit collar, the recent design that I just brought. First, we need to get the pattern done before we continue. There is two things that you have to note whenever you are making a collar. Every collar comes with a stand and a fall. First, you must know how to draft the stand and then how to draft the fall. But for this rabbit collar, which is the same collar that I'm wearing here, let's first focus on the fall because that is the most difficult part of this collar, which I need to teach you first. And I know most of you guys are already pros or professional, so you can easily make the, the stand, which is the other part that I've shown on the screen. So without wasting my time, let's go straight to the work. And please don't forget to subscribe as I told you previously. So as I told you, we must first concentrate on the four parts, and that is what we are about to do. So first and first, you must draw a rectangular line, which you'll be making the shapes out of it. So the next size that we are using here is next size 17 and a half. So if your neck size or your collar size, now nah, your neck size is 17 and a half or your collar size is 17 and a half, then you can go specifically with the same measurement that I'm about to produce for you here. So first you have to draw out a rectangular line. Make sure your line is very straight. And please don't forget, as I said, the next side that I'm working on is next 17 and a half. So for next 17 and a half, your length for this collar should be 22 inches. So the rectangle should be 22 inches in length. And then it should be five inches, yeah, five inches in breadth. So now I have my rectangular shape well made. To make it very clear, I might use this marker so that things wouldn't be too light away from the camera. And then if you are watching and then you think you are not getting the diagram very clear, you can put your, your view to high definition or HD. That will give you another clearer view on YouTube. Yeah, so we have the rectangular line now. We are moving forward to drawing out the collar shape. Be very, very, very vigilant with the measurement that I will give to you. That will help you draw out the collar shape without any difficulty. So let's start. First, let's start with the middle. Measure from, take the measurement very, very, very serious. Measure from this part, from the middle of the length. We are having 22 inches here. The middle is 11 inches, right? You measure from the middle to this part. Two and a half inches. Two and a half inches, right? Then, so you measure from here, this part to this part, two and a half inches. Then, you measure from the other side of the rectangle, four inches four inches here four from the other side so let, let me name this part left the right side and then the left side here so right and left follow carefully and then you can easily draw out this collar 
without any difficulty. So from here to here is four and a half inches, right? And then you measure from the same angle here to here, one inch, one inch, one inch here. Okay, so you stand in the middle. We are working on half of the collar and then we will transfer this half to the other side to cut out the entire thing. So we measure from this side to, to this side. We have four, so you'll be having two inches here. The middle, you stand at the middle and then you measure from this side one and a half inch. One and a half inch, right? So we are about to shape the lower part of the collar. So the next thing that you do is to stand on the right side and then measure from the lower button of the rectangle shape to the upper button of the rectangle shape. You mark it three inches, three inches. So don't forget our markings. So let me just indicate from here to here is three inches. Yeah. And from here to here is four inches to make it very clear and easy for you, right? And then the middle here, I, I, I measured two and half inch, right? So let's start by first making of the ship. Here you need some kind of drawing sense here. So you will be making your curve. You'll be joining your ship from this side to this side first. Then you join another curve here. So I forgot to uh, first tell you the kind of tools that you need in making these things. So the tools that you need is your marker, you need a ruler, you need your tape measure, and then you need your French cave, which is this one. And I've already told you your marker, your ruler, and then your cardboard, including your tape measures. So let's go. After you are, you are done with the marking of all these lines, you'll be joining it with your French curve. So you will stand here and here to make your first curve. Secondly, you stand here too with the same French curve to make your curve here. So as you can see, you are having your curve neatly done. After you have these first two curves, you stand right at the joining here. This part of the curve, the sharpest part, let's say from here to here, the middle. Then you measure two inches. Two, no, 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 no. Just measure two and a half inches. Two and a half inches. Just straight. Two and a half inches. Yeah. Then you are about to also join to create the shape. You stand here and then you make another join in here. So you stand right at the middle of the line that you've marked. And then, so here is the middle. You stand at the middle line, then you mark straight, straight, a straight line from the middle to about four inches here. Four inches. Here. Then you join the line straight to the four inches line. Right. So you have this shape here neatly done. One thing I like about creativity is you can easily turn the shape anyhow you want after you've got the basic pattern that you need. So after you are done with this you stand below here and then you lift it about a, half, a quarter inch quarter inch then you join these two but before ending just create some slight curve and join here so after you are done with making of this shape we are going to transfer this shape from the right side to the left side but it cannot be done by just lifting it from here to here. You, you first need to cut it off and then you turn it to the right side to create the entire pattern, which you can use for the collar. So without wait, wasting much time, let's draw out the stand part of the collar and then we will just cut off the, 
the four parts and then transfer it to the left side to make the entire color full, right? Okay. So as I already told you, the stand that we will be making is for size 17 and half. So again, I will need to mark out my straight line for the size 17 and half. So another straight line. Always note that whenever you are making a collar and the fall, the middle of the fall is about two and a half or two and a quarter inch, the stand should always lessen by 0 0.7 or about a quarter inch. It should lessen a bit. Like this is two and a half. The stand should be somewhere around 1.7 or one at the same measurement 1.7 1.7 and then another we are making another square shape here for the four as i told you the size of my neck this is the next size is 17 and a half So 17 and a half here. 17 and a half. So I'll create the 17 and a half inch stand out of the rectangle. Then I'll smoothly join the line here. Yeah, so for every stand, you need to smooth in the edge here. And then the base to you measure from here to here, three inches. And from here to here, 1.7 inches. Now 1.2, one yeah. Then you join it smoothly here. So you also transfer this side to this side. So we now have our stand. This is the stand. And this is the four of the collar. So let's carefully smoothen things by transferring this right part of the pattern to the left part of the pattern. So this is the easiest way to cut it out. So I'm done with the cutting out of the rectangular shape of the fall and then the stand. So I will smoothly transfer the stand from the right side to the left side. So first let me shape out this curve and then I transfer it here by holding this edge and then reshaping it out. And then I also cut this part out to you. So without forgetting this part, let me indicate the measurement here because somebody might surely ask me what did I like, which measurement did I use from this part to this part to care to create the, the cap. So I used so I used one and a half inch from this side to create this car to create this curve. Yeah, here. One and a half inch. Sorry I didn't indicate it on the drawing. Sorry.
So after you finally have this half part of the pattern, you can transfer it smoothly to the other side to obtain your measurement. So what you do is you stand here, you smoothly turn it down here to the right side, to the other end, exactly at the end of the rectangular shape. So here. Then you remark it out like this. Yeah, see? So you then cut it off again. After you are done cutting, make sure you put the two down to know whether if there is an excess trimming that you, you need to make, then you trim it out like this. Yeah. You reshape the down where I told you to. So after you are done with this, you have obtained the four part of the collar. This is exactly how it works when it is being closed. That's it. So, as you can see, it is exactly the same as the picture that I'm showing on the screen. This is the the stand part, the, the four part of the collar, and then we are about to reshape the stand part. So all you do is you are about to go and then you hear, you you attach this to the violin and then you do the sewing. So without wasting my time, let's go and then attach it to the violin and then do the sewing, right? The next thing I'm about to do is to transfer the pattern onto a violin, what some people call stiff. So I'll be transferring the pattern by drawing around it onto the violin. So this is how I will do it. You have to save space. This is the four the four and this is the stand first you trace out or mark out the pattern here you have to hold it very firm and tight so that it, it wouldn't drop off it's marking so you mark out the line neatly like this so i have my my stand here and then you mark out your fold to you right here So you now have your pattern for the making of the rabbit collar. Since you have this pattern, you can trace and then enlarge it to any size that you want. Be it 18, 19, 20 or lesser, you can use this same pattern to do everything that you require. So just keep this pattern and you can adjust it to any next size, any collar size that you want. So the next step is to cut out the marked violin. So I would like you to watch how I cut it out. You need to be very sharp with the cutting. Make sure you don't make any wrong movement whilst cutting. You need to be very, very vigilant with the cutting. To so first cut out the entire sheet like this. Then you make time to trace it out bit by bit. So you cut out this one too. So now we have the 
the stern and we have the fore. The stern and the fore. So we have to attach it to the fabric that we'll be using to make the collar. So after you are done with the cutting out of the violin, the next thing that you'll be doing is to place the violin on a piece of cloth, but make sure you fold the piece of cloth. That's, that means it should be on fold. And then the fold to you should have a piece of cloth on fold. Then you attach the violin to it. Now you will just iron it for the violin to stack on the fabric so that you can do your sewing. So as you can see, I've placed the iron on the violin for it to stack, move the fold and the stand to shape in here. So for the fold, you have to shape in the edge where you will be fitting it to the collar. Shape in it a bit and make sure it is all okay. Yeah, pick it out like this, then you iron the edge. The next thing that we are, we are about to do is to stitch on the edge of the pattern. So you stitch alongside the edge here, from here to here, and from here to here, leaving this piece. So you stitch here, leaving this piece. So my advice for you is, whenever you are stitching alongside the collar, make sure you leave some slight space for the collar to be easily turned and then it could make the edge of the collar look very sharp after you turn it to be very smooth. I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. So let's go. Let's start by stitching it. You need to be very careful when stitching along the line. Give it a little bit of space to make it very easy for you to turn and then it will make it very smooth at the surface. leave some space behind uh, behind the cutting line make sure the space that you leave around the edge of the, the sewn place should be equal because it might create some effects at the front after you are done with the cutting and then you turn the piece over you see it drawn out along the edges of the collar. I'm going to turn it over. You hold this edge, then you push it inside like this, then you pull it so it doesn't tear off. You do the same thing to the other part. After the ironing, you do your top stitching. Top stitch it to make it very neat. And you can see gradually the effect is coming out bit by bit. You can see it. Yeah, so this is the stand and this is the four.